Welcome to our special series of Let's Talk for KubeCon EU, and I'm your host, Sonim Bhartia. My next guest is, once again, Miska Kaipinian, Senior Director of Engineering at Mirantis. And today, we are going to talk about uh, Lens 5, new features, and of course, K0s. But before that, Miska, it's great to have you back on the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and there is so much to talk about, all the new exciting things in Lens 5. Catalog is there, Hotbar is there, Spaces is there, and then, of course, we have to talk about K0s. So let's start with uh, with Lens 5. Uh, I mean, it's in beta. People can still play with it, test with it. It will be released, final will be released later on. But let's talk about what is new and exciting about Lens through this release. With the Lens 5, we wanted to take Lens to the next level. Uh, and one of the key features of Lens 5 is actually the ability to add your entire cloud native technology stack and make that easily available to you. So you can reach all the parts and technologies of your cloud native technology stack right within Lens. So, so far it's been only about Kubernetes, but yeah, now we are really expanding that. And uh, the key feature in there is the, is the catalog. So basically this catalog allows users to add all of their resources in there and uh, make it very easy for them to find those resources and to give you an idea what those resources could be. So they can be all your clusters, they can be your pipelines, they can be you know, even some web links to your, your some important uh, resources uh, that you are using on a daily basis. So we feel that that's gonna be a game changer uh, for Lens. What are the other things that are there in this release that you are excited about and also community is excited about? I mentioned about the, the catalog. So I think what is even more exciting is now with Lens 5, the ability for users actually to collaborate. So far, Lens has been only a single user experience. So now with Lens 5, actually users can create uh, spaces and uh, within those spaces, they can share their entire catalog of assets, uh, like access to their clusters, and make it very easy for, for DevOps teams to collaborate and work on their cloud native applications. If I ask you to explain what exactly is uh, Lens Spaces, because when I was checking out, it's more or less like a cloud service. Is that correct? That's correct. So we are hosting you know, Lens is an open source product. It doesn't require anything, you know, you will just install it on your local machine and, and you are good to go. So what we decided to do is to, in order to enable this type of collaboration, there has to be a centralized service somewhere. So we decided that we can actually host this centralized service for all of our users to make, make it easy for them to share uh, these assets uh, between each other. And, and uh, yeah, so users, they, they start using Lens, and in the Lens, there will be option for them to log in and sign up for this Lens Spaces service. And once that's done, they can start syncing data uh, in the cloud and, uh, and uh, with other members of their space. As they do give access to other members of this, how do you ensure, you know, there are, are there any policy-based security feature also for access control? Absolutely. So one of the key things uh, with space is, of course, we wanted to crack the, crack the difficult part first. So how to make it possible for users to share access to the cube clusters. So in there, actually, we created an entire new technology stack that is providing end-to-end -end encrypted uh, connections from the user's machine into these clusters and uh, making sure that we are fully conformant with the um, existing uh, Kubernetes role-based access control. And uh, that's fully enforced in place. We are not breaking anything, but we just provide more conven convenience for our users. Can you also uh, dive a bit deeper into Lens Hotbar, which is also, uh, if I'm not wrong, is a feature that was kind of uh, demanded by the community itself? Yeah, so we are all, often we are, we are, people are asking that, okay, how can they do things more fast and, and, uh, and everything? And we are often compared to, okay, we are using this type of command line tool and this command line tool might offer us to do some little shortcuts and stuff like that. So what we wanted to do with Lens Spaces is to be, take the 
take this to the ultimate level. So if we think, think about the, the best possible solution for, for quick access of anything, so we can learn a lot from the gaming industry. Let's think about StarCraft or some other games where those players are using these very sophisticated hot bars actually to trigger different commands for their troops in a game. So we applied the same logic uh, with Lens. So why don't we provide this type of same hot bar capability right in Lens where user can assign certain tasks, automations and, uh, and uh, different places that they want to open in right there in a hot bar. Uh, making it super fast to go around, navigate, and, and work with their workloads. So this is in beta. When can we expect it will be available for general audience? So we are aiming of uh, getting this out uh, as a kind of GA release, the Lens 5, uh, by end of May or latest in June uh, this year. So it's not, it's not far away. Uh, Ms. Scott, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, talk about Lens 5 new features. And there are a lot of exciting features, you know, I, I, you know, spaces, hardbar, you know, and all those safety and security features that are really exciting. And I look forward to seeing whenever it's available uh, for general public. And I would love to have you back on the show to talk about it. So thank you for your time today. Thank you so much.